Hi there, good afternoon, uh, good morning rather. This is Chartbusters. This is a show where we highlight the buzzing stocks of the day, get you expert advice on how to capitalize and trade on those stocks. I'm Mangna Malu. With me is Nigel D'Souza. Nigel, looks like a good morning so far. A third of a percent on the nifty mid caps, roaring ahead. Two stocks in the green for one in the red. More importantly, ahead of expiry, we're above that 11,800 mark yesterday. We crossed it, couldn't sustain above it. And I was looking at the 11,800 put. That's the one that should come up for you. Close to around 15 lakh shares added out there. 16 lakh shares on the short side. So the bulls believe, okay, after 11,700 yesterday, 11,800 is something that we can conquer and sustain up until the next two days. Well, interesting, Mangalam. Now, good to see second session running. The Indian markets are outperforming after underperforming right. in 2019. As well as in this month itself, we have been underperformers. But the last couple of days have been good. Stocks like Sun Pharma as well have moved high. I think there was a CLSA note earlier this morning they were quite positive on the uh, you know on the company that stocks moved to the high point of the day so that's been a while actually i think it's important to see what happens in the next couple of days because mm -hmm. it could be a lot of the shots are getting squeezed out and from friday we'll return to the normal uh, you know course of action so whether or not this is just an expiry phenomena that's playing out well only time will tell for the time being the bulls will say what the hell you know we are 125 points up from yesterday's low so uh, good going. As you said, the 11,800 put, that's seeing some build up. So that I think the premium was around 35, 40 rupees approximately. So I guess they're betting on the 11,750 holding out at least in the near term. Absolutely. Uh, that's the lower level, Nigel. You know, uh, 11,850 with the 20 day moving averages, that is something we'll be watching out for as well. Because while the Nifty is still holding higher, a couple of stocks, the heavyweights, they're coming off the highs. In fact, TCS at the low point of the day, Reliance has come off the highs. And we have ITC, a fair weight on the index as well at the low point of the day. So we'll see what happens in the second half of this trade and tomorrow as well. First up, all the top stories. DHFL defaults the second time in the last one month, fails to honor its repayment of dues on commercial papers. The company managed to pay 150 crore rupees, which is 40% of the outstanding dues, intends to pay the balance, re, balance 225 crore rupees in the next couple of days. And IFCI surges as the board approves corporate business plan of proposed sale of shareholding in National Stock Exchange of India and other divestments. SBI Life surges as Deutsche Bank maintains its buy rating on the stock. The management remains bullish on achieving higher growth in FI20. Company expects the value of new businesses margin to expand by 100 basis points. And Pyramid Enterprises is under some pressure after Ikra downgrades Pyramid Cap and Housing Finance rating to AA from AA Plus with a negative outlook. Okay, how do you trade the Nifty from here? We've had uh, a good couple of days itself. So yesterday we put on 100 points. Today I think the Asian markets, they were trading in the red. Most of them trading flattish with a bit of a negative bias. Overnight, the handover wasn't great from Wall Street. But the Nifty is in the green. So telling us that, well, we're playing catch up or at least for the time being, we're outperforming what the Asian markets are doing. Ashwini, uh, Gujral joins us currently. What would your trade be at around this 11,820 odd mark? See, my sense is that uh, we were correcting for the last many sessions and around the 50-day moving average, uh, we have found support. And uh, yesterday onwards, you can say that the market is now finding buying on dips. And uh, today, uh, good strong opening. But uh, uh, if we can sustain current levels, uh, chances are that you will see further buying and short covering as we go into the uh, expiry. So that way, this is a good time to get long on Nifty as well as Bank Nifty. And chances are that uh, post-afternoon, we could actually move higher because uh, there is a bit of pressure on the downside, but not uh, really enough. Having said that, uh, HDFC Bank is a buy with a stop of 2420, target of 2460. Voltas is a buy with a stop of 650, target of 675. And Adani Port is a buy with a stop of 400, target of 425. Ashwini, I uh, was looking at Cadilla Healthcare. In fact, suddenly as we speak, some of the pharmaceutical stocks have started to move higher. Cadilla is at the high point of the day. Wokhard starting to move higher. Uh, we had Sun Pharma as well from the frontline space, high by about 3, 3.5%. Any, anything uh, that's a buzz there or maybe stay away? 
See, you have to stay away because these guys, they move one day and then go down for three days. Uh, they are all oversold, which means that uh, they are trading way below their 200-day moving averages. So, you know, just uh, some short covering, etc. I don't think there's much going on there. Right, Ashwini, thanks a lot for that. We will keep coming back to you through the course of this day. With that, we shift focus to the corporate on our radar right now. We have Thomas Cook. That's the stock on our radar. Uh, yesterday, remember, the stock moved higher by about 4 4.5%. And just as we speak, the stock holding up in the green. Madhavan Menon, who's the chairman and the MD of the company, joins us to discuss the outlook for the company. Uh, Mr. Menon, thank you for joining in. Uh, you know, we're coming closer to the end of the first quarter, which is the most important quarter for you, usually given the summer vacations, etc. But this time around, there were a fair amount of disruptions. There was this consumer slowdown. Airfare prices had risen. There was that election as well. So in that uh, environment, what sort of growth did you witness in the first quarter? And uh, how does that shape up for the rest of this year? So uh, good morning to you. I, I think we've been extremely uh, lucky to miss out uh, on some of these headwinds. Uh, if we look at our travel, uh, that is the leisure travel, which is one of the important metrics that we follow year to date, uh, we've grown 22% over last year. This essentially represents people who've traveled on holiday and you'll appreciate June is our peak uh, travel period. If you look at forward bookings and we are at the end of the booking season, we are still 16% uh, over last year. And my expectation is that uh, we will continue to see demand. Now, this goes against uh, all the news of slowing down in consumer spending. Uh, we have not seen it as yet. I, I don't know whether we will see some of that effect flow into uh, September. I mean, September and uh, all the way through December. But right now, despite the headwinds, let's say, of higher fares due to the um, you know uh, jet ceasing to exist, uh, we've seen some fares. But fortunately, I, I'm also glad to report that these fares are coming off right now. And in reality, both domestic and international fares have stabilized. Well, Mr. Menon, uh, as you said, you've been lucky even in this sort of, uh, you know, uh, headwinds, you've managed to grow and you're reporting quite a yeah, decent, absolutely. healthy growth as well for the first couple of months. And there are plenty of headwinds, mind you. It's not just consumer spending. Yeah. We are yeah. tracking uh, President Trump's uh, Twitter handle as well, what he has to say with regard to Iran. That's what's, you know, disrupting um, uh, uh, you know, the uh, the globe on the whole, as well as, as you said, the aviation crisis, that's something that's playing out as well. For the year on the whole, what kind of a growth number uh, are you looking at? You said for the first uh, couple of months, it's at around 20, 22%, if I got that right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, we don't uh, give guidance, but let me just mention this, that uh, our uh, destination management business, which is tourists coming into India, has performed very well this year. That has got nothing to do with uh, all the headwinds that we're facing locally. Uh, as far as the foreign exchange business, we've actually seen a 21% growth in our volumes over last year, especially in the retail space. And a lot of that has come in in terms of billings of our prepaid card, which is a card that we issue ourselves. On the leisure side, my expectation is that uh, we will continue to register uh, double-digit growth through the rest of this year, 20% uh, upwards, uh, looking at what we've registered so far, as well as the forward demand. Uh, the other space which we've seen a fair amount of activity is in the meetings and incentive, which we call MICE. Um, that is driven partially by the World Cup. Uh, because we have various corporates taking their dealers uh, to World Cup matches that India is playing. So the largest one we've witnessed so far is the one in Manchester. Uh, but looking at the mice business, we're still seeing demand through the next quarter. Again, quarter four of the calendar year uh, is something that I'm not willing to predict at this stage because I think we will see some effect of the consumer slowdown at that point. All right, Mr. Menon, the buzzword on a day-to-day -day basis is the World Cup and we are cheering for our boys in blue. No, actually, Let's I'm so more, uh, you know, uh, 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 jealous, if you must, envious of the corporates who are taking all their people to the World Cup. Uh, so maybe we can... It's appraisal time. I'm waiting for my <laughs> appraisal letter. Let's no. move on. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> nobody, no, nobody is taking me. You know, I, I, I constantly. No one's taking us either, sir. That's why we're here. But <laughs> nobody takes me for the World Cup. I tell you so. what, Mangalam <laughs> and me will call you post that show, and we'll make a plan. Maybe for the World Cup finals, all three of us will be there. Thank you. Cheering for uh, India, hopefully. When Virat lifts the cup, so we, we'll talk Perfect. about that later post the show. <laughs> for the time being, tell us what's the breakup of inbound business as well as outbound business. Look, um, it, uh, outbound is obviously in our travel space is the largest. Uh, inbound is significant. So if I were to compare uh, just inbound and outbound, and I don't think that's the correct way to do it because there are other segments that we do. Uh, but, uh, you know, if I were to take just the inbound and the outbound, I think uh, in, inbound will be about 40% of, of that uh, subset and uh, leisure travel and mice will be 60% put together. All right, leisure travel and mice would be 60% and inbound 40%. You know, I was looking through this summer report that you've uh, released and out there, one thing that stood out was growing appetite for travel loans, yeah. which was high by around 50 to 60%. Now, Mr. Menon, we've been speaking to you for a lot of time and every time we ask you whether you're interested in an NBFC license, you say no, you're happy with Forex. But with this emerging trend, are you not tempting, tempted to go ahead and uh, provide some travel loans as well? Not at all. I, I think, uh, you know, this is not a business we necessarily understand. Uh, we've got other members of the group, um, you know, the in the Fairfax group, we have investments in IFL and other companies. And, you know, we leave it to these guys to figure out how they do it. Uh, I must admit that uh, I believe that the NBFCs service us much better than we try to do this on our own because we just don't have the ability. And I think we would uh, stretch our focus from what we do well by getting into the NBFC space. All right, Mr. Menon, I want to ask you about the new acquisition you did, the digital uh, photo business. Uh, what's the targets out there? How's that shaping up in yeah. the first year? Yeah. What sort of a number you're looking at? Maybe in a three-year time horizon, you must be having some targets in mind as well? Yeah, yeah. So for the financial year ended uh, 20, uh, my expectation is that they will contribute approximately 40 uh, crores to our bottom line. Uh, in the financial year ended 21, that number will go up to about 53 crores. And then the financial year ended 22, I, I don't remember, but it's further growth. Uh, my expectation is that this business will just continue to grow uh, significantly and um, you know it's a new it's an it's a new area though photography is not but uh, you know they're expanding into new markets and they've just 40 crore on the top to line or 40 crore on the bottom uh, line Mr. Menon the Atlantis bottom line on the bottom line of the consolidated numbers uh, Mangla uh, we will add uh, 40 crores um, I'm also happy to report that they've just been awarded the contract for the Atlantis in Barbados. Um, you know, we have the Atlantis in Dubai where we have uh, the sole rights. We are now moving into Barbados. We're uh, tendering for places like Disney, Shanghai and uh, the uh, Beijing Universal uh, Parks. Um, and I've just been out in China uh, over the last week and uh, you know it's unbelievable the volumes that these people go through. Uh, just to give you an idea, the uh, Disney Shanghai does um, eighty thousand packs a day in peak time. Hmm. Uh, All this, right. uh, this you know vastly outpaces what even uh, Disney in Orlando does. All right, so that will take your. So the, uh, uh, our expectations are that uh, DEI will contribute. Right, that will take your bottom yeah, line much bottom higher. Line. In fact, uh, you know, the revenue uh, when you acquired the business for 2018 yes, was yeah, closer yeah. around 460 crores. The EBITDA was 42 crores. So let's see what you are, uh, uh, you know, aspiring for out there. You know, and an another interesting thing, yeah. you know, you, you've been acquiring a lot of companies and uh, one of the travel companies, Cox and Kings, it's, it's seen a sharp decline from uh, 200 plus rupees, you know, the stock price around 50 rupees. Do you, as a person of the industry, know what's wrong out there with the company? What exactly is happening? And if there is nothing wrong, then uh, does it not make an interesting bet for you to go ahead and purchase it? So, I, I, in all fairness, I don't think I should comment on what's going on with a competitor. Uh, I honestly don't understand uh, what is happening. 
um, you know, I, they are a they are a competitor. They do uh, deliver services uh, which are uh, very credible, and I hope they come out of whatever they're facing. Uh, but I think in the long term, uh, you know, this industry provides vast opportunities. Um, which is why we are seeing all sorts of players trying to enter the space. So my expectation is that uh, Cox and Kings will find its feet in some form or the other for whatever they are facing and come back. Is there I, a possibility that temporary. Cox and Kings is struggling, that's why to. Thomas Cook will do better? No, <laughs> I hope not. All right. <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't think uh, we we focus on Cox and Kings ourselves. So, oh, okay. Uh, you know, there, there in, there's enough competition out there to oh. worry about. All right, Mr. Menon, thanks so much for joining in. We'll keep cheering our boys in blue. And uh, you took Thank us you. across Thank the you globe. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, you took us to West Indies and Dubai in the last 10 minutes. Yeah. So we'll find it hard to concentrate, but we'll have to get uh, going with the show. Thanks so much for joining in. Looking forward to speaking yeah. to you after your we, We'll numbers. talk about this after the show. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> All right. On that you. note, then we'll uh, you Bye know, bye. wrap up that interview. We'll slip into a short break. You come back. DHFL and Reliance Infra, their stocks on our radar. More details when we return. now uh, given up on its 11,800 mark, just hovering around that. In fact, a sharp knock seen from the top and the key culprits of that, we have index heavyweights, Reliance, way off days high. We have ITC again at the low point of the day and along with that uh, HDFC. So three heavyweights on the Nifty accounting for most of the decline that we've seen in just the last few tra uh, few trading minutes, if you must, around 11,800 for the Nifty. But uh, let's move on to a CNBC TV 18 exclusive. After LNT managed to get uh, controlling stake in Mindtree in the open offer, CNBC TV 18 learns that Mindtree founders have decided to finally sell their stakes in the company and exit, some faster than others. Kritika Saxena is here with the details. Well, Mangalam, as you know, this has been one of the largest uh, corporate battles in history. This is the biggest hostile takeover in the IT sector. And uh, pr uh, promoters, that is the founders of Mindry, have been resisting sale for a very long time. But now it's very evident that uh, a takeover uh, by LNT, considering they have already gotten a controlling stake, the open offer, of course, is on till the 28th. Uh, but it is imminent now that LNT is going to be the promoter of Mindry very soon. And hence, we understand from our sources that very recently, Recently, and I have been able to confirm from sources within the promoter group that a decision has been taken by the founders internally that they will be uh, exiting the company and selling their stake. Now, how it happens is going to be slightly trickier. So there are right now uh, four key founder promoters that are a part of the promoter group. Uh, the promoter shareholding in Mindry, remember, is about 13.3%. So there are Four key founders that includes Krishna Kumar Natarajan, Subrato Bakchi, N.S. Partha Sarthi, and Rostav Ravanan, who is, of course, the MD and CEO of the company. We understand that some founders are going to be tendering in the open offer, but others may stay on and then uh, sell stake in the open uh, market through open market transactions uh, after the deal is completed. So they are, they are probably looking at uh, ensuring that there is a smooth transition. Uh, uh, as I indicated, uh, so far, uh, all in all, the four founders together hold about 8% stake. So the other are affiliated family members and there is a foreign promoter as well. Now, the other big question is what happens to the management? How will the transition go through uh, once LNT uh, completes the open offer, completes the takeover and buyout of Mindtree? We understand that LNT has indicated that they are looking at a management reshuffle and rejig. So to that effect, we understand from our sources that Ross Ramanan, who is the CEO of the company, has indicated that uh, he would like to put in his papers, but that's going to be after ensuring a smooth transition. So yes, they have uh, pretty much given up arms now, but uh, they are looking at ensuring that LNT, once they do take over, there is going to be a smooth transition. We haven't, however, gotten an official comment uh, from either of the players, uh, LNT, Mindtree, and the individual founders. The indiv individual founders declined to give us an official comment, but we are still awaiting a comment from the company. Okay, all right, Kritika, thanks so much for joining in and filling us in uh, on that particular story. Remember, the stock, in fact, you know, for the year it's up, it's uh, up close to around 10%. It's seen a bit of a downtick from the high point of the day because some part of the street was expecting a pricing battle to play out. So the intraday chart is telling you now that pricing battle may not play out. That's why the stock is lower. Only intraday chart should come up for you. But let's bring in Mukta as well. Mukta, the mine tree open offer closes on the 28th. Take us through who all have tendered in so far and who is likely to, to tender in. Right. You know, the big piece here was Nalanda Capital, which was so far resisting LNT's takeover and was siding with promoters. 
But after you know pressure from other investors who had reached out to SEBI, Nalanda Capital did tender its 10.6 percent stake to L&T in this open offer this week, and which has really prompted other fence sitters, including several MS, to you know now start offloading their shares to L&T. And we will see soon, you know, UTI MS, Arohi, even Premzi Invest, etc. You know, looking to uh, start selling their shares during this open offer. But really, the big name here is. Subroto Bakshi is one of the you know the key promoters, and we understand that he is likely to tender his shares during this open offer, as well as uh, founder S uh, Janki Raman, who had left the company in 2014, who, who holds 1.5 percent stake, is also likely to tender his stake to L&T during this open offer. So really, these two names are uh, you know likely to set the ball rolling, and we might see other founders also looking to now sell their stake to L&T and you know complete this uh, this complete acquisition. All right, Mukda. Thanks a lot for that. In fact, uh, you know, the street indeed was hoping for a price battle. The stock at the low point of the day, just as Kritika and Mukda were telling us about those details. So definitely, the street is reacting to that. With that, we wrap up on this edition of Chartbusters. You stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. Trading focus. Outcome. Remember, it defaulted the second time in the last one month. Odd as it fails to honor its payment on dues on commercial papers. Abhishek joins us to fill us in. With all those details, well, Abhishek, you know, after they defaulted the first time, they came up with the payment. Even after then, the stock is down nearly around twenty percent. So I think most of the street was not really expecting them to come up with this payment. Well, uh, Nigel, it has fallen. Let's not comment on stock price movement. That is for them. I mean, for investors to decide. But the good factor is that they are paying. They have not defaulted completely. Uh, unlike NCLT cases where the payments are not coming to the lenders, a uh, DHFL has paid last time as well. When They uh, sold their stake, got the money, and repaid. So for the second time in last one month, they have defaulted. This time on its commercial papers worth about three seventy five crores, wherein they have made a partial payment of one hundred and fifty per one hundred and fifty crores or forty percent of the dues, and the balance two twenty five crores they intend to pay over the next couple of days. This time there is no time definitive given, unlike last time wherein they said that they intend to pay it within seven days. Uh, uh, key. alert is that it, the dhfl has defaulted for the second time and the rating agencies already have a d rating on the credit rating of uh, dhfl so, uh, company did mention that they are in the process of selling down their loans including the wholesale uh, project loans and they will honor all the obligation outstanding to their creditors and maintain their 100% uh, repayment rate uh, going ahead as well back to you All right, Abhishek. Thanks a lot for that. So that is DHFL lower by about uh, eight tenths of a percent just as we speak. Uh, but however, over the last uh, few trading sessions, as Nigel said, lower by about twenty percent. Uh, the other stock, which is uh, uh, a buzz in today's trading session, is Reliance Infra, up around ten percent now. Of course, the stock is out of FNO ban and perhaps seeing some short covering. But apart from that. There were some uh, news reports as well. Anisha, uh, is there anything that can change the fundamentals for the company? There is no positive fundamental news to really back this kind of up move because uh, yes, there are newspaper reports today suggesting how the company has been appointed the project developer for uh, the Varsova Bandra ceiling project, but that is not fresh news because do remember that the company was already announced the lowest bidder and was given the order last year itself. In fact, the company had gone ahead and submitted all bank guarantees and other documents and formalities that were needed last year itself. So yesterday there has been a formalization to it. and they have been formally announced as the project developer but i don't see it as a major positive yes there are a bit of rumors going around that maybe given the recent financial performance of the company and the rating action maybe uh, the mcrdc might look at retendering this award but that has not happened separately there's another news uh, flow that that talks about how the company has depledged its holding but do remember there also they have depledged just 0.07% equity so versus 31.8% that was pledged earlier now the pledge holding is at Around 31.7, and that too is not a very significant uptick. Apart from that, last week as well, we had got some negative news where an India <laughs> ratings had downgraded the rating to a D, issue or not cooperating category, and that too was not very positive. So over the last one week or so, we haven't heard any incremental fresh news, but the stock has been in a world of its own. Okay, world of its own. Thanks so much, uh, Anisha, for joining in, filling us in with all those details. Well, time to slip into a short break. Up next, we'll get you an excerpt of our exclusive conversation.